welcome to the lobby GameSpot's weekly hangout every Tuesday at 2pm Pacific right here on GameSpot.com, the home of video games, where gamers go to know. What other slogans should we use? Passion and integrity. Passion and forever. integrity, forever. That's a bad one. Heart. That's real. Love. Water. Earth. Captain Planet. We can't have water. Okay. On this Waters. week's show, we've got Daylight. Mm. We do have Daylight. That's <laughs> a thing. I'm sorry. Chris Waters. We also have Child of Light. Yeah. Kevin Van Ord's here. Jeff Gersman's going to be on later. But first of all, we've got a load of boxes that are ominously sitting around us that I feel we should hand to Kevin. All what? of them. Here yeah. we go. Oh, hey, this wasn't Just in the contract. Do, your, do part of your work, my friend. Just, there we go. All right. We got <laughs> Clone Trooper. We got... Oh, they're Clone Trooper. Which guy is that? Clone Trooper Deluxe? Yep, yeah, no, it's another Clone Trooper, but he's Deluxe because he's got colors on his thing and also maybe a jetpack. We have General Grievous Bodily Harm, and we have... Who's that over there? Who's this? Oh, it's... Who's that? Is who's it Yoda? This? Is that yeah. Yoda? No, that's Dan Vader. Okay, Dan Young, Vader. It's a nephew of Darth Vader. We're giving away a bunch Darth of these. Vader. All of these. Right, give me these. Here we go. Four prizes for four people. To win those, please follow us on GameSpot.com. Use the oh hashtag GSTheLobby. And uh, make sure you put down which one of those bad boys you want to win. We're going to give away all four during the show today. But first of all, video games, because that's Star Wars. And although we do love our friends at Sideshow Collect Collectibles for once again bestowing us with these ridiculously ornate uh, figures. Is that what you call them? Figures? Or are they... You say figures, but... Figures. But I like when you say figures. Okay. Figure me timbers! Yeah. Daylight. Yeah. Explain to me why you gave it... Who would have thought? GameSpot's lowest review score of 2014. Is it really? Did we Have we not given out any twos? I'm pretty no. sure we've given something. There have no, been three no threes. Twos. Oh, okay. Have we There's not been twoed anything yet? Basement That's Crawl. We haven't, we haven't Thank uh, thrown that big old two. Twos are no. terrible. Basement yeah. Crawl, something else, and this. Yeah. Basement Crawl was this year? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Time wow. flies, Kevin. I know, right? Time flies when you're, when you're not having playing fun. crap so, games. So, <laughs> Actually, I, it doesn't. It just grinds to a So wall. the reason I gave Daylight a 3 is because I think it's a bad game. Okay, yeah, that seems uh, to be a, a good But, reason. yeah. Um, but I, and I like scary games. All right. I, I'm really... So I, should, I guess I should just Hop right this in. thing here. Hop right in. If you have any questions at all for Kevin about Daylight, as ever, use the chat, use the comment box. Let's do a or new just tweet story. us at GameSpot. New story? Let's see the very beginning. Is it going to... Is it... Is it going to be dark. So this is a I know you're not game from here. Zombie Studios. This is a first person horror type game. What? Uh, that yes. uses, apparently it's some sort of procedural generated stuff going on there here. There is some procedural uh, generation, not in this first opening area. This is going to be the same every time. But when you start getting into the labyrinths where a lot of the gameplay takes place, things start getting a little bit different sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. It's going to, like, you're going to go on these different like, is it just a different floor layout, different enemy placement, uh, Sometimes different, it's different puzzles? Sometimes floor layout. Um, the puzzles are always the same. Okay. But this really isn't a puzzle game. Um, this is more about, this is more like if you've played Slender, The Arrival, or something like that, you do get this, uh, this, this instance where you have these ghostly spirits mm -hmm. sneaking up on you, and you take damage from them. Okay. Um, what I what I kind of consider to be like insanity damage or something like that. Sanity damage. Uh, so do you do you get like cool insanity effects like in everyone's favorite insanity game, Eternal, Eternal Darkness? Darkness? No, nothing nothing quite like that. There are some um, surprise moments that come out where uh, where you do see things you didn't expect, like okay. ghosts, but like. Well, I mean, like, you would like, expect ghosts, though, right? So, you, you expect like dead animals, it's pictures of dead pictures animals. Pictures of dead animals. Yeah. Mostly, the, the, the gameplay comes down to you walking around and picking stuff up. Okay. Um, stuff like what? Ghosts? Stuff, <laughs> stuff like, re you know, anything that's a... It's, they're, all, they're all called remnants. So, they're remnants of the past. It could be um, a, a memo, like here, a, a, a memo written by uh, one of the doctors or nurses here in this now abandoned hospital. Mm-hmm. And now you see one you of found a glow stick. two main mechanics. One is the glow stick. Oh, so this is also an 80s uh, rave simulator. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, can you start spinning that thing? What's the button for pop LSD? <laughs> and then you see that uh, whenever you have the, a glow stick, the uh, items that you can interact with will glow. You don't... Oh, what really happened to your arm? What's that stuff on your arm? Tattoos. It's unclear at the this tatao? stage in the game. Okay. The tatao. That's... <laughs> Nice. Sorry, that always makes yeah. me laugh. Uh, so this is a game that is uh, meant to be played multiple times. That's what they I, say. Okay. 
Um, it is because it's procedurally generated, and so supposedly there are different things that happen. There's also this weird Twitch integration where if you're streaming to your Twitch channel, people can type things like scream yeah. and cat and things like that and make scary noises happen. Uh, Goob Shoe Riot has asked on Twitch, how many Twitch commands have you found? Um, I know that Scream works, that um, Meow works. Okay, what happens? Is it cat um, meows? Some other meow stuff. is scary? Uh, well... I guess it's all in the delivery. There are... You can type in light, and the light goes out. There's something you can type okay. in, too. I'm, here's one of the most... Here's my favorite moment in the game, actually. Oh, my. Freaky Calliope. Yeah. So I like there you that. Go. I like that moment. That's pretty freaky. But uh, baby but crim train wreck. Uh, so this is, I believe, the first commercially available Unreal Engine Four game. Why? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, uh, yeah, look, yeah. Does it look better than this later? It looks no. okay. It looks totally fine. But it always looks like this. Okay. It always, more or less, looks like this. Oh, okay. what's that thing? There's a thing. There's a person thing. So there you see. You got to avoid. It's her. just the LSD. Oh, man. there's Don't a worry dead end. It. There's a dead. Oh, but if she's disappeared. That's well, just the Molly speaking. Yeah, there's, there's, you can pick up flares, and hopefully I'll pick up a flare in a moment so you can see. There, I just picked up a flare. When she gets close, you can light the flare and burn her away. Oh my. And now you see that glow sticks out. I'll activate another glow uh, stick. I don't like this part. There you go. There you go. Okay, has this game genuinely scared you, at least on the first way through? Yeah, the first time there were a couple scares that got to me, um, especially when I turned around and there she is, like with her big gaping face. Um, right oh, up my grill. She's got a gapey face. She does have kind of a gapey face. That's like, like know, one of the like, top three creepy faces that there is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like light coming out of her eye holes and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so here you go through, and this is about like piecing together the story. Have All you right. pieced together the story? Yes, yeah. I have pieced the story together like eight eight times now. So this this is actually my ninth my ninth playthrough. Why? There we go. Piggy button prompts. Well, so you're grabbing all these things, right? Yes. And uh, of course, the the note lying around to you know aid in exposition is a well-worn video game trope. Uh, the one that always comes to mind to me that like genuinely freaked me out was when I was playing Resident Evil. Uh -huh. And there's the the journal you get of like the the person, the girl, or someone who's like, or the guy who's slowly itchy. going insane. Yeah. And then you get to itchy, tasty. <laughs> yeah. Which is just like it sounds absurd when you say it, but like yeah. reading it in context is eerie. Uh, you're, we're of course blowing through this for the sake of the demo, but like, how? what's your overall impression of the stuff that you end up reading, of the, the world that it sort of informs it's, you? Like, It's a complete mishmash. Oh. And that's that's one of the, the game's real problems, is that, um, is that it tells a bunch of stories. It's not telling just one story, really. It's pretty much every horror cliche you can think of jammed into into in 90 your, minutes. In your review, I actually laughed when you mentioned ancient Indian burial ground. <laughs> I, I could not believe that that was a is thing. That, is that what well, this place there, is built on an ancient Indian burial ground? Well, there's a bit ground? where you go later to a construction project that's, that's then abandoned. And as it turns out, it was being built on an ancient burial, burial ground. But there are notes from like um, the facilities people who who were all like, yeah, I can't, you know, I, I don't know what's Bugs. up with the, the weird sounds at night and, and you right. know, the, the patients of the mental asylum and, and, and uh, notes, you know, from doctors saying this and that and the other yeah. and the weird behaviors and do, then you get out in the forest. styles and entries and... Yeah, the, but, the, but the problem is that, like, it's, it's all telling, like, just a mishmash of stuff. Like, it, you know, and of, now... I don't know, nine playthroughs later, and I don't know that I have a real good handle on everything, but a good enough handle to know that it's that it's not worth caring about. It's just about, like horror is, hodgepodge, not enough yeah. to like come together and form a cohesive place that you can actually like get a little bit immersed into, imagine like because I feel like so much of these games is that sure you can do jump scares, you can set the tone, but as like uh, ho the thing that gets me about horror is that my imagination like outpaces it, yeah, and right. so like uh, the best horror games I think sort of set your imagination running, mm. uh, and you just start imagining all the freaky crap that can happen to you. How do you compare this to games like I don't know Outlast or or Amnesia Machine, or something, like, of that. Or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Well, they're both better games. Number one, but Outlast was one of my top ten personal games from last year. Okay, so and you were familiar with the finer points of this genre. Yeah, I really, really liked Outlast, and, and uh, this game has 
some shades of Outlast, mm. as Can it were. Can you sprint for like four steps only? <laughs> or are you just doing no. that to like stop and look and no, stop? No, and look? even worse. <laughs> You can, Here we go. Here's can, is, the reason is I'm lost, and because I'm so far away from the TV, I couldn't quite tell where I was on the map. Oh, okay. So and you're I, just checking around corners. You can't. You could actually. You can sprint run. forever. Yeah, you can sprint forever in this game. That's, oh, yeah. which is conducive to terror. <laughs> um, and that's. So you can just outpace the ghosts. Even wow, if you're wow, smart, yeah. It's like, it, check me out. I'm Usain Bolt, motherfucker. <laughs> One of the one of the problems with I mean in this area that stuff's not so bad because you have to backtrack and stuff and you turn around and she might be there. Okay. But when you get into the forest, which is which is open, there's nothing really to be afraid of because as long as you keep sprinting and don't turn around, mm. you're never gonna get caught. Okay. Right now I'm looking for the sigil. So this now that I have down at the bottom right you can see how many remnants I have. It requires six out me of to six. pick up six for me to move into the next area. But in order to do that, I have to go pick up the sigil, which is the key. Here Probably we go. Probably in here, right? So here's oh. the teddy bear. And you know, there's an, another horror cliche. Yeah, a weird, a freaky a weird teddy bear. old freaky teddy bear. Yeah. Little kids! Uh, inverted color. Oh, and, and viruses. Yeah. That's, uh, and a dude on the phone talking to you. Yeah. You've got him totally. on speaker. So. He's, he's coming, yeah, he's coming through. Oh, here's one of those... Oh. Uh, did you just get like jump cutted? Yeah, I got jump cutted to a different area. But this is the past. Is there I think some is sort of to... like? But see, you see these. There, eventually, you, you see there are like twelve um, of these pictures on the walls. Oh, she's drunk. She's locked. And there we go. Oh my! I'm getting a no. fear Alma kind of vibe off some of those bits as well. Yeah. First encounter assault recon, of course. <laughs> but what's, what's oh, of course, first yeah, encounter yeah, assault course. recon. Oh, yeah. Yes, now I know you're now I know the game you're talking about. Storied sequel, first encounter assault recon two. Two, <laughs> and it, that the sequel to that game, which is of course a three. -er. <laughs> oh yeah, first three <laughs> encounter recon assault recon. Yeah. So now I can't use glow sticks or um, or flares or anything while I have a sigil in my hand. Okay, so I've got two hands. Yeah. yeah, obviously. So at this stage, I'm just running to get to Head, the exit. Can you turn the Twitch stuff on at any stage? No, unfortunately, you have to be, it, it's it's a little complex. How does it work? You have to, well, you have to stream separately outside of the game. So whatever it is that you use to stream, you stream that way. And then once you're streaming, you then go into the game's menu okay. and, and uh, join the two. You can't stream directly from the game. You only do right. the connection from the game. So. Well, apparently Twitch is down for scheduled maintenance right now anyway, so... Oh, good times. It doesn't matter. So now you've seen the first, I guess, the first fifth of the game? Great. I haven't seen a ghost yet, Kevin. Oh, uh, you saw her that we one kind time. Of gl okay. Like, you glancing kind of her. glimpse. But that's one of the problems with the uh, always run thing, is that I've done this enough times. You've got loads of glow sticks as well. Yeah, you're never at a, at a loss. If you play on medium, you're never at a loss. So every section's kind of like the same. You have sort of a safe area, like this one, where you're not going to encounter a ghost and where the remnants don't mean anything. They're just picking up stories. Is, is that like a... You know the way those things glow under the glow sticks? Is that because they're covered in, like, bodily fluids? Yes. It's like a black light? Yeah, totally. I'm asking actually, if all the sigils are covered in semen. What I didn't show here is Ghost that I just semen. I just came through <laughs> here and, uh, and and peed all over everything. Oh, there she is! There she is! Okay. There she is. That's, okay. a, that's a scripted flyby. Go that, shoot her with a that flare. That freaked me out. That did freak me out. Yeah. Is she the one that's putting ghost semen on everything? Um, I prefer not to answer Spoilers. that question. Spoilers. Kevin can neither Spoilers. confirm nor so deny. So here's another another scripted sequence here. Okay. This lady seems distressed, and also not of this world. Her face is really... Is this the Dark Knight? Was that... Was that... Was that, he, that was weird. Incident report. So, of course, this is uh, patient was acting weird. Um, entry. Yeah. Kept putting ghost semen everywhere. Really weird patient. Uh, Custodial staff continues to file complaints. <laughs> So now here's one of the game's very few puzzles. So it's a box pushing puzzle. It is a box pushing puzzle. All right. Is there much combat in this? There, there is there no any... combat in this. Okay, but you do have to use the flares to keep the ghosts away. Sometimes. So that could be. Is that timing based? You need to like go ha. Well, no. If you suddenly if you see her, I just reach quick so that I don't take any more damage. Or if I hear her behind me. Yeah. So here's another bit. What where happens we have if to... you get damaged to the max? 
you die and you start at the uh, you start at the beginning of whatever area you're you're in at that time. Uh, what if they did? You know how like uh, Prey did that thing where you die, you have to go to the ghost realm and like yeah. fight your way back. Yeah. What if they did something in a horror game where like you die and you like become a more horrible place or something? Like, because all all the souls who die in these horrible places, they just become part of the horror scene, right? Yeah. What if I don't know? Zombie yeah, studios do pick like up on I this. Just realized Prey is the last game that did that. Probably. I'm sure there's a game that's done that. Well, somewhere. Borderlands has the kind of like you're downed, but you can get your second win by killing an yeah. enemy while oh, yeah. you're down. That's but true. that's not really. This game is so entertaining. We're talking about Prey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, I gotta, I gotta open the door. The door now opens. Okay. And now this is where you basically get into the next scary area. Okay. So this is scary. We've got a minute, Kevin. If you will. This is scare more me in a corridor. Minute. If I don't see like loads of ghost scenes, Hor that would horror make me door. Scared. This is all. That's not what I said, but I think that's what I should have said. <laughs> yeah, this you, is the horror you're door. You're in a new scary area. <laughs> and walk, we're walking down the horror door with your. I can't think of a one for glow sticks. You guys. Anybody? Uh. With my uh, oh god no sticks no no we're not letting you reach. talk anymore okie doke all right so I've I've found well, you came the, here already uh, yeah but I I can't do anything so here to until speak. I get the yeah <laughs> oh, god is this uh, I at least uh, you know at the very least Danny I appreciate your follow through thank you yeah. oh. dedication <laughs> your dedication to semen is appreciated amongst us all <laughs> it's good it's probably a good thing Twitch is Dan right now where's the next ghost. Oh I don't gosh. know. I'm going through That's the... That's what makes it scary. There is a threat meter. Right now, it's blank. Okay. Like, you see it's that. It's a giveaway, threat meter? What yeah, is down, you have a threat app on your phone? <laughs> down at the bottom right of the screen next to the remnant Can I get this? List. Can I get this and then walk down to the mission at nighttime and hear it blink at me? You, you can what's, do that anyway. What's the, what's the thing called in Ghostbusters? The, the sensor thingy. Ecto-1. PKE PK meter. PKE Oh my god, Jeff Gersman dropping the knowledge bomb from yeah, off camera. Yeah, you need to get that app. You need to get, get PKE meter. Is it... Can I just say that I'm so bored of this game <laughs> now? <laughs> I think we are too. All right, let's finish it off Danny, there. let release Kevin from his torment. Uh, I've seen so much of this game now. I want nothing more than to just be... But it's different every set time. ...set free from my misery. It's procedurally... It's different every time, but... There's one cons constant is that it's tedious. Oh, thank you. Putting Yay! Down. Putting this down. So Put this, put this the table down. We're out. All right, we'll be back in a second. Kevin, you stay right there. We're going to talk with yourself and Jeff, Jeff Gerstman. Uh, how do you say your name again? I don't know. Geoff Gerstman about all the games that came out this year. But for now, new trailer for Wolfenstein dropped yesterday, I believe. Today? Today? Maybe? Huh? Let's check it out. Nazis. Ghost Seaman. Video game. My hand. The road is not safe. You kill the Nazis. Here, I stay with Carl. We wait for you here. Kill everyone.
mich auf dem Weg zu einem Autohändler. Mit einer Volkswagen, der macht es nicht mehr. Mit einem riesen Mercedes-Benz stattdessen. <laughs> and that trailer got really weird. Uh, Wolfenstein, one of uh, two big games coming out in the next couple of weeks, I guess. Uh, it's all gotten a little bit slow, but uh, I'm happy to be joined by Jeff Gersman from the TheGiantBomb.com. Hello. And of course, oh, yeah. Kevin uh, Van Oort of GameSpot to talk about what's already come right. out. I guess Q1 is kind of done and dusted. We've closed the doors on the first quarter of the year. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get into the sales figures and stuff later on, but first of all, what's been your favorite game uh, of the past uh, three, three and a half months or so. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, there's been some good stuff. Nothing that is like just straight up like, oh, this this is definitely the greatest game. Mm. You know, I, I've been pl playing Trials Fusion, even though I think it's not as good as the previous Trials game. Like yeah. the leaderboard stuff is still good enough. Uh, Infamous was fun, but you know, I kind of blew through it in a day. Uh, what about Titanfall? You played a lot of that. I did. I you know I, I played a lot of Titanfall right around release, and then. I probably ended up playing about 25 hours of it, and I, it's, it's really well made. But you know, like they announced like that DLC, I'm just like, ah, yeah, you no, nope, don't, don't care. You like, don't that's, think that uh, it's weird. I feel like this is the first Titanfall conversation I've had with anyone in about a month. <laughs> really? Yeah. It sold um, 300,000 or so on Xbox One, and about 100,000 on Xbox 360. I find that number weird. I thought it was going to sell way more on the old. Well, how consoles. do you? I mean, how yeah. do you even have a number for Xbox 360? Did they put that out? Yeah, I saw it on an article somewhere. Because within, well, that I, came out in April, so the March NPDs wouldn't say anything oh, yeah, about yeah, of course. it. Of uh, course. So maybe you're thinking PC? Hmm. Or maybe I made it up. Maybe. Uh, either way. Or maybe EA put out numbers. Who knows? So do you think that game has been successful enough for them? Do you think it was, more, it was most important as a software sale, or was it as a reason to get people to buy Xbox One? Uh, I think it actually, it, I mean, you know, that, that's Microsoft's motivation on, on that end. I don't think that any of that actually matters. I think that. They planted a very firm flag and said Titanfall is a very big, world-class marquee franchise. Mm. So when the second one comes out on all platforms, right. uh, you will all already know what this is and rush out to hopefully go buy it. Mm. Um, you know, they 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 did a, a great job of establishing the franchise, and, and you know they they made a great game. You know, uh, it is a lot of fun to play, but I just don't know how much longer I'm going to be interested in playing competitive yeah. first-person shooters. Uh, oh, just anymore. full stop. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, you look at kind of what Call of Duty, the, the trend of Call of Duty for the past couple of years. Like, I mean, now, like, call, Ghosts, for, for Ghost, Activision is just sending out desperation emails all the time. <laughs> that are like, do you want to buy yeah. Snoop Dogg announcer pack? Or, I mean, we've got weed leafs you can put on your gun, and I now we're selling them because, yeah. who? Uh, like and and then their like whatever service sends out like you got eight headshots that last round that's more than you've ever got and I'm like I haven't played this game in four months I don't know wait what. it sends you emails yeah oh god like they, they they the number of things they've turned on for Call of Duty in an right. attempt to remind you that it exists and that maybe you accidentally bought it is uh, a pretty clear sign that things are maybe not going their way. So you think maybe uh, Titanfall has uh, tied itself onto a, a genre that's sort of already on a downward. Seems like, like what it. could they do with a Titanfall 2 that would make you feel <laughs> compelled to play it? Uh, I think, um, you know, I, I think it, it, a lot of it stems from my problems with kind of the, the first Titanfall was that a lot of the gear felt uh, uninteresting and, and sort of meaningless. Mm. Uh, the, you know, granted, I, I tend to kind of play those games a very specific way, but I, I feel like everyone's probably that way. But a, a lot of those items just didn't seem useful. Yeah. You know, they had like, what was one of the perks like? Oh, the ice pick, the, the hacking thing happens faster. It's like Which you, you never, never use. You never yeah. hack stuff. Like, who cares? Like, that's all stuff that at some point you're like, well, do they have another mode planned? Like, yeah. Do they have some other stuff? And, you know, they'll, they'll put up their maps and modes and, and stuff for this one. But 
I think generally that game is, is largely successful uh, because it did establish a franchise and gives them like a, a good spot to launch off yeah. from. Whether they want to build a campaign, which you know I don't, I don't know that they necessarily do, or or really kind of figure out what are the ways to actually blow out that combat, and, and whether it's like, is it just more higher player count or, or whatever. But All right, stepping away from the consoles for a second then, yeah. your favorite game of the year? Dark Souls 2, Ooh, probably, yeah, yeah. so far. Um, although I gotta give a shout out to The Wolf Among Us, which I, I never, I'm not a big fan of the Walking Dead universe, so yeah. I never really cared about the games that much. I didn't care about the, the world. Um, the, it's funny though, The Wolf Among Us was, the world was new to me. I'd never, I didn't read fables until I played the first episode. And mm. then so I played the first episode and then I, you know, I ran out and grabbed fables volumes and uh, started reading them voraciously. And now I, I think that universe is, is, is really awesome actually. And the, the third episode in particular, the one that, uh, the one that just came out is, uh, is, is fantastic. Mm. Um, and I actually would rather you know, play those games uh, eight days a week over well, or The Walking Dead. That, so. That's one of three different, one of those sort of, I don't know, what do, what do we can call these now? Adventure, it's just chapter based yeah, the games? Episodic yeah, episodic episodic. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's all in that, Walking it's all in that Dead uh, specific Telltale style too, which I actually can't stand. Really? Like the, the gameplay stuff, like the, especially the way they handle action. Like that first episode of Wolf Among Us where they're like, now get in a fist fight. And you're like, right. oh, this is like everything I hated about The Walking Dead. Yeah. I'm good. Like, it's, it's, it, cool. it's, it's starting to get stale. I mean, already, you know, you know, you go from Walking Dead getting Game of the Year awards from different places to, right. you know, already we sort of know more or less how things are going to go. Like it's becoming more trite with every single yeah. one of these games. I mean, out. maybe it's just the weird bubble that, that I live in these days, but it feels like no one is talking about The Walking yeah. Dead season yeah, two. Yeah, I have like, but then you see, always see the numbers that come out, especially for stuff like iPad, and suddenly you realize there's a massive yeah, amount of people sure these it, games. It's, it's one of the yeah. things where like, you know, no one talks about Skylanders anymore, right. but it's quietly out there making a zillion dollars and, and all that stuff, where it's just they, they build their fan base and, and cater to that fan base, and they're not necessarily pulling people yeah. in anymore. We're not, the conversations we're involved in anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about Broken Age then? Sort of, you know, another one of those adventure games being released in two parts, but very different in terms of gameplay to, to the other two. I'll so leave Telltale. this one to Jeff because I didn't actually play Broken Telltale Age. So. Uh, it's a casualty of Telltale oversaturating the adventure game genre. <laughs> you know what? It, it's a... Uh, I, I played a little bit of Broken Age and, and thought it was incredibly well made. Yeah. And had zero desire to continue playing it. Did you complete it? Nope. No. I no, even, even the short first episode, like I was just like, yeah, no, this is this is all really well made. Maybe I'll get back to it someday. And yeah, I just uh, you know I, I liked uh, season one of Sam and Max when Telltale put that out. <laughs> right. That was great. Uh, and then kind of everything after that's been like, you know, maybe adventure games really did go away for a reason. I find uh, I I did the same thing. I played probably about two hours of that. Never got to the end of it. And the thing that irked me was knowing that it, when I continued playing, I'd never finish it. That I'd have to wait. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that annoyed me about yep. the way I play the Walking Dead games was I waited for everything to come out, yeah, totally. tried to keep away from spoilers, and, and then just barrel through, through it one go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I like going through it in the episodic style because uh, I don't really watch much television. Right. So for me, this sort of takes that place of something for me to look forward to. You know, in a, in a month or so, when the next installment comes out, I can sort of ruminate on what I think might happen sure. or what this means or what that means. Yeah, so what about Dark Souls 2 then? Dark Souls 2 is a, is a really great game and I, I, I feel sort of bad that it, you know, the, the kerfuffle around the visuals and how it didn't look as good as uh, the, the, the first showings of the game and how the lighting model had changed and things like that. I felt like... I mean, that's only like every video game ever released. Yeah, like, like you say no, they put out a trailer that was like their ambitions for the game and then the realities of developing for old ass console hardware hit him. Yep. Weird. Yeah, and, and and it's too bad because the game is really excellent in its own right. Mm. Um, I, I still I still maintain that that Dark Souls, uh, the original, is very special, and I don't think Dark Souls Two really captured all of that. But I think it's I think it's still awesome, and it has this big world that I loved exploring, and you know I'm I'm still in it. I'm still playing the PC version now, going through and hopefully finish. For a second time and, and see how that goes. Then a third time and then a fourth mm -hmm. time. Well, there are bosses mm -hmm. that I missed the first time around. Oh, well, you have there's, to go there's back a and whole play area, a whole little area that I never even saw that I didn't even know existed until I started playing the PC version. I'm like, what's down there? And I drop down and suddenly there's this whole thing I'd never seen. And there's a boss in there and and so on and so forth. So that and to me that's the wonder of of Dark Souls is that there's there's so much out there to 
to take in. And it's such a big game, it's such a difficult game, but when I was looking at through all the sort of titles that came out in the past <clears throat> three or four months, the amount of like smaller experience, like Nidhogg, Jazz Punk, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. Like Oh, Jazz Punk is amazing. There's so many of those I that have- I love Jazz Punk so much. What a great game. Yeah. Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm not, <laughs> really? actually. Right. That's, have you completed I, I it? I forgot about it, yes. Because yeah. I got freaked out about three levels in and just-, and just I mean, there's only like four, so okay, right. <laughs> you should just go <laughs> take care of it. Is it, so um, I'm, I'm only been in this industry a couple of years, you guys been around a lot longer. Um, there seems to be that whole, you know, split between the whatever's the big mainstream game and then your indie stuff. Is it that the middle tier games have disappeared? Because when I was looking through the list of what's come out, it seems yeah. to be either go big or go home, yeah. or and then these kind of small yeah, indie totally. titles. The, the bigger titles are just getting bigger and more, you know, they become more risk averse as a result. So, you know, you, that's why you have things like, yeah, we're going to make another Gears of War, I guess. Mm. Uh, yeah. Because that's an established franchise that they can justify spending a bunch of money on. And then, you know, your publishers like THQ and Midway don't exist anymore, and, you know, uh, you have even the the publishers that we still think of as like smaller publishers, like a like a Warner or you know, yeah. even even Ubisoft to some extent. I still, for whatever reason, think of as like eh, they're not quite on the level of like an EA or something. Are, are we getting better games out of it though? When you look at like some of those small games, yeah, like totally. I, th I think yeah, we're getting more games. We're getting riskier games out of the smaller mm -hmm. end, yep. and and it's way more exciting. You know, if you think about it, the what we're losing out on are, are a lot of mid-tier games that, you know, you would have some really heartwarming, interesting things like, uh, you know, like Alter Echo or, yeah. uh, you know, Blitz the League? Say, yeah, Blitz the League <laughs> or, you know, just uh, PsyOps, you mm, know, weird yeah. kind of, uh, you know, interesting kind of genre titles that don't necessarily exist in that way anymore. It's weird uh, thinking about who's in that space now and I keep thinking Dead Island and yeah. then I can't come up with anything else off right. the top of my head of, of who how, really sits in how that about space Wolfenstein? Anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. Wolfenstein yeah. is kind of the ultimate like they're just putting out a shooter. I don't know kind of game. Like you look at it and you're like, all right, go with God, I yeah. guess. I whatever. feel like whoever's making their trailers is doing a really good job of selling a game that maybe isn't as good as what the trailers. I don't know. I'm, I look at the, the they, they seem compelling the trailers, but then when I think about what that game is, it's a single player eight yep. hour shooting game about killing yeah. Nazis. They go, oh, I've kind of done that like yeah, five or six and, times. And then. you you think about it. You know, like what what is what is Wolfenstein now? Mm. You know, they, they people love killing Nazis. I for, guess they will always love killing Nazis. As much as they love it, Super like hard. you know, you don't get a lot of games that have it that, that feature that as a core yeah. element. And so maybe this return to Nazi murder will will get people back on board or something. But I just kind of look at it and go like, I you know, I kind of liked the the last Wolfenstein. Uh, return? Uh, yeah, I think Return was the last one. Or Escape. It was oh, just whatever. Wolfenstein. Whatever. It was yeah, just it was. It was. It was just. Yeah. It was the, yeah, that's right. It was their reboot of, of just Tomb Raider. I thought that was yeah. that was a good, <laughs> ambitious, weird thing. Um, but Tumenstein. All right, we'll talk about E3 in a second. All the games coming up. First of all, I want to quickly talk about uh, PS4 and Xbox One. First three months. Uh, Jeff, first of all, which do you think has had the best? Uh, maybe not necessarily in terms of sales, in terms of what it delivers to consumers, which is the best one, do you think, at this stage? It's PS4. I mean, it's $100 cheaper. It has most of the same games, hmm. and they often look better. Like, that's not even a question, you know? It's uh, it's it's pretty undeniable at this point that the, yep. the PS4 is, is pulled ahead for a reason. You know, it's definitely not over for the Xbox One. And, you know, I think some of the stuff... Uh, <coughs> that the Xbox One has, you know, exclusively, I think, is, is interesting and fine. You know, Titanfall's a, a hell of a game. Yeah. Uh, Arguably Dead the Rising biggest 3, exclusive was, of... Yeah. The, it looks on yeah, paper, definitely. it looks like it's a bigger exclusive. So what is it about the PlayStation 4? Is it, is it really like... I think I, I just don't care about exclusives because I own both systems. So right. that's, that's not really a, a meaningful factor to me. It's more just like, you know, okay, if we really think about it, the vast majority of games will be available on both platforms. Yeah. Uh, or and probably on a PC as well. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, but if we, if we're just talking about consoles and trying to actually compare them, you've got a cheaper, more powerful console uh, that has you know ninety percent the same games, uh, and so so even in this case where I I don't particularly like Sony's first party development all that much uh, when I compare it to most of Microsoft stuff, mm. just franchise for franchise, uh, I I mean it's, it's the the PS4 is is the console right now. Uh, we, if, we were, if we were having this discussion last year, we probably would have mentioned another company as well. Uh, Nintendo today announced that they're not going to have a press conference again at E3 this year, which just means that they're going to do their own thing on the side, probably. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the future of the Wii U? Is it just are we done and dusted with that at the moment? So are they gonna uh, I mean, uh, you know, they're always going to be one hit away, right? You know, they're just if they can. But get is that, that hit getting further and fur further away? I, I just I, I think it's it's 
you know, the the thing that they run into. Well, the the thing I think about is like, are they actually capable of making that game anymore? Right. You know, is Nintendo still Nintendo? And and you look at the games they're putting out, and like, they're fine. You know, if that's what you're looking for. You know, like, they had uh, some fake thing where it's like, oh, the Reggie Mech is taking over Nintendo's Twitter account today. And right. like one of the things this is their year of Luigi for 2014. Yeah, one of the things yeah. they tweeted was there will be no Urban Champion two. Okay, I'm like yeah, <laughs> of course, because why do anything risky that might be weird and interesting? Yeah, kind of Go awesome, ahead maybe. and just yeah. keep putting out the same crap. <laughs> Everyone's working out so well. Um, not that I really wanted Urban Champion two, but that would be something you'd look at and go like, huh? Hmm. Well, someone's crazy over there. Good, uh, but instead they can't even do that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Looking forward to E three then. What's your most anticipated? Game. I was just look. I, I had to look to see what it was. The order, of course, they're probably going to show more of. I guess Metal Gear Solid Five. Sure, Nintendo yeah. might yeah. show that Zelda that they might have showed last year. If they didn't. Oh, the the Tecmo Koei one. Is that an actual the thing? The Dynasty Warriors Zelda game. Oh really? Yeah. I that mean, sounds the, great. The the rumor going around is Resident Evil Seven. Okay. Will be shown. So not so Dino Crisis I, Three. It, well, probably not in favor of. Uh, of Resident Evil 7, certainly, but... Are you saying Capcom still makes video games? I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh. No, it's, it's interesting, though, because it's either it's their chance to, to prove that, they know, that, that they've still got it when it comes to Resident Evil, but it could also just be another, you know, just like point and laugh moment mm. from, from the sidelines at this stage. Like, let's hope that they, they've learned their lessons from... So what is six, it to get excited yeah. about for E 3 Certainly, it's like software announcements. Is it stuff that that probably nobody knows about? Is that what we're like the 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 question mark is what we're? Well, that, you, that's you, always my favorite thing about. You E3. already know what I'm excited to see at E3. Do I? Yeah. All right, let's leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff Grisman, thank you very much for coming on. Anytime, uh, Kevin. What, what's this ever? inside baseball stuff going on, man? <laughs> inside right. baseball. Why is it fine? Is it the Guinness fine. cap? Yeah, the Guinness fine. video game. Yeah. Right, that'll be something I get excited about. Uh, thanks very much, gents, for coming sure. on. As ever, uh, we'll be back after a quick little break with a live show interstitial first of all i believe this is some sort of watchdogs season pass trailer the game's not even out yet let's see what the season pass has <laughs> <laughs> i'll blow shit up because i ain't no hippie I got some inconveniences I need to settle. Do you think you know this city? Seen everything? Jesus, shot fire squad! You gotta stay sharp, amigo. This all goes deeper than a dung beetle and a cow pie. Oh, shit! What happened to the power? And if you want to peek through the looking glass, you're gonna need these. High-powered frequencies sent straight to your brain for one insane trip, brother. Things ain't always what they appear to be. Trust me, compadre. We got our work cut out for us. You ready to take a trip outside the normal? Did you know there were cyborgs who tried? As far as Bungie is concerned, Destiny is a shooter first and foremost, but it has role-playing elements. You can find loot and upgrade your gear, your character and- We play horror games for you guys. Okay. Oh! What's this? Oh my Scratch in his head. Oh, my buddy died. It's a party I've got dude. some. I've got some innocent bystanders in here. Oh, oh, oh they are out! Whoa! It's fine. What just happened? Oh. I fell into the river because I didn't jump into the boat. Ooh. <laughs>
<laughs> Jurassic Park Genesis style was on Megabit yesterday. I uh, ran right into the river. The freaking boat was docked. Come on. That game is pretty. Uh, game is pretty weird. Yeah. Sean Method snaking around in Mega Solid Five. That was earlier today. Indeed. Uh, was yesterday. Tomorrow, random encounter. Theme park and playing. Destruction or construction? That can go Probably only both. poorly. Uh, now playing procedurally generated horror in daylight on House of Horrors. Scary game and maybe some screams. And hopefully ah! not more daylight. <laughs> and maybe some more crazy editing. <laughs> All that talk about Molly earlier. Uh, I think unfortunately our director uh, Benito decided to pop some and went a bit. Naming names. My oh, favorite part. Man. Hey man, that guy knows he has a drug problem because it's one that I share with him. <laughs> Uh, if you saw the sneak peek at a Destiny feature there as well, uh, that's going to be on uh, later in the show. But first of all, Chris Waters. You guys didn't mention Destiny uh, coming up to E3. No. What do you think about, like, Destiny, Carolyn, saw it, so she was talking about it a bunch. Yep. I, I want to be excited about that game. I want to want to play it a lot, but I just still kind yeah. of tepid on it I'm waiting. what they've shown. Yeah, there's nothing... It looks, you know, sort of objectively very interesting and grand and beautiful, but I, there's no... The hook just ain't there and for I me I trust yet. Bungie. But, yeah. you know, because I'm a Bungie fan from way back in the Mac days, but we'll see. See, I'm not a massive Halo guy either. I, yeah. Like, I've completed basically all of them. Either. No, I'm a massive Halo guy. Oh, you are? Yeah, Sorry, no, you are, no, yeah. no, Don't compare us on that fact. <laughs> so, like, in a way, I kind of feel like maybe that's why I'm not so interested in it. But you as a Bungie fan, and you're still a little... Like, I don't think it looks bad. It's just yeah. there's nothing about it that's made me... You know, whereas Evolve is a game that uh, for you oh my goodness. Like, has hooked you. Oh, I'm so excited about that one. I've gotten the chance to play it a couple times. I think we talked about it after PAX. Hmm. And uh, I think, you know, they, they keep talking this game about like, well, this is the, you know, the, the Goliath is the only monster we've shown so far. Yeah. And uh, it's the only arena we've shown so far. So I, with that game coming out this fall, I feel like E3 is a pretty sure bet to like, see some new stuff there yeah. from that game which I am genuinely excited about every person to a man and woman I know who has played that game has come away saying that is something really special you need to see that game we're getting big nods from both Tom McShay and Mary Kish who yeah. have both played it and they're rad. backstage alright first of all let's get rid give, give, give away some oh, of these yeah. awesome right. sideshow right. collectibles we've given away the first two can you pick up Deluxe which ones did we give away Deluxe these Trooper already? and General Grievous Bodily Harm who I think is over there this Where's is deluxe. Uh, sorry, these are both deluxe. This one is shiny, and this one is 501st. Okay. So. And get me Grievous. Which one do you want? One of them. That's Grievous. That's Grievous. Sorry. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, I there, really he is. Want, there he is. I really want to I love that see dude. it, though. All right, the winner of deluxe shiny, thank you, Cindy, Can I is not open at rec reckless underscore X on Twitter, and the winner of general Grievous is at laser microwave. Laser you want that burrito? Microwave. I bet you get it hot with lasers. Great Twitter name. Uh, yeah, all right, two of those to win. Uh, we've still got two more to give Aww. away. We've got uh, that Darth Vader guy, and of course, this uh, this other um, deluxe trooper. If you want to win one of those bad boys, please follow us on the Twitter and send us a tweet at GameSpot using the hashtag GSTheLobby and let us know which one of those bad boys you want to win. Uh, I believe we're going to have a look at a Destiny preview. A proper look. A proper, not, not yeah. The, not the tease. Or we might just watch the first five seconds and then cut back to the live show in a session. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows it's what's live. Who knows? You know, Twitch was down for the first 25 minutes of this show as well. Are they back? It's crazy. Literally anything could happen. You may come back and I'll have, I'll just be covered in the blood and jibs of Mr. Chris Waters At here. least it won't be ghost semen. It might also be... <laughs> now finish on his face with ghost semen. That's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> As far as Bungie is concerned, Destiny is a shooter first and foremost, but it has role-playing elements. You can find loot and upgrade your gear. Your character and your weapons earn experience, level up, and get new abilities over time. There are three classes, the somewhat mystical Warlock, the Hefty Titan, and the Sneaky Hunter. The classes have different skills, but any class can use any weapon. Borrowing from MMOs, Destiny has six-person endgame raids. It also has smaller three-person missions called Strikes. But Bungie also wants those players who prefer playing solo to be able to have a great experience. You'll see other players in the world, and public events give you a reason to work with them to achieve a common goal, but you can keep doing your own thing and ignore them if you choose. In my brief time with Destiny, the game felt good, but also familiar. In gameplay terms, it seems to be covering a lot of the same territory that Borderlands covers. I'm hoping that the game's universe and its lore can help set it apart from other games, but for now, there's a lot we still don't know. For instance, 
Destiny will have a big player versus player component, but Bungie is waiting until E3 to reveal any details about that aspect of the game. Stay tuned to GameSpot for all the latest on Destiny. Start. Mm, uh, all right. You're just, just giving Adam Tom McShea before we Tom McShay. I Thomas meant McShay. to stop before we came back. Well, Hi, our, well, our friend Tom McShay is here because he's going to show us off uh, Child of Light yes, from I am. Ubisoft Montreal, creators of other side scrolling Far Cry tactical 3. games like Assassin's Creed and Tom Clancy stuff. Uh, Child of Light, on the other hand, this game is uh, looking much more like the in the Rayman vein of video games. Well, one look at it makes it clear that it's the spiritual successor to Child of Eden, obviously. <laughs> because we're raving through space-time. Tom McShay, explain this video game to me. It is a video game that is kind of like a fairy tale uh, and that you fight wolves. Classic fairy tale thing. So yeah, this yep. is well. How much focus is this going to require for you? Because this is like the the battle system. <laughs> but you seem like you're immediately you're pretty overpowered. This is active time battle. This is like you could do this in your own time, right? This is you don't. This is turn based. You are not hitting buttons. No. no, this is this is like. Oh no, that's oh no, sorry. Active time battle is literally the antithesis of that. <laughs> yes, this is this is, is like a uh, time battle, like a buzzword from some game from like a decade ago. ATB is yeah. the Final Fantasy okay. system in yeah. most All Final right. Fantasy games. Sure. So this is the melding of let's say Final Fantasy, no, it's actually early Grandia. Final Fantasy, it's actually, or Grandia. It's actually Grandia, yeah. With but but inside of this side scrolling outer world, absolutely gorgeous ethereal. Storybook world. It's yeah, it is. It does come out of a studio you wouldn't necessarily expect, but Ubisoft does do these like quiet, artistic games sometimes, and that's that's something I really like from them. So, what is it about Child of Light specifically that's got you all gushy about it? Ah, uh, it's almost the opposite of gushy. So it's it's really quiet, quiet and sad and contemplative, and it's just like contemplative, and it's just like very different from the type of stuff that I normally play and I normally see, and I I just really got into it because I thought it was going to be because it's colorful yeah I thought it was going to be one of them light hearted like, kid games and I love those too but it's not like that at all it's like really somber uh, in terms of like the minute to minute or the story that's the tone okay. the tone of it like the music and the artistic design and, and the, the storytelling like all that stuff is really just it's melancholy is like the main mood of this game uh, uh, if you if you got sorry if you got any questions for Tom at all uh, send them in via the, the usual means on Twitch at Gamespot or in the Gamespot comments. Sorry, you were saying. So the combat is actually the, not like that though. Like it is it's really fast paced and frantic because like so your moves are you're, like you can see yourself at the top of the bar. Those are my characters, and the bottom of the bar is the enemy characters, and you're kind of racing to the end of the bar to attack. Okay. So it's it's all like speed and timing and making sure your enemy can't attack before you. So it's 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 kind of the opposite of how the rest of the game feels, but it kind of makes sense too because it's like this is the one time when like the world isn't like a sad place. This is like when they're empowered finally. Mm. Um, yeah, and at the end there's triumphant music. But and yeah. there's you know, it's not just sort of waiting your turn. It's when you move your little blue firefly dude, you can like slow an enemy so you're manipulating where the enemies are on the timeline and you can if you hit them during the cast phase you interrupt them and prevent them from attacking so there's this there's it like you know obviously tom now is sort of playing with a, a character that's super powerful and these monsters are posing no threat but yeah. i've played the first like hour and a half of the game and you know i i haven't been like smote down in battle but it, it is tense and i do feel like there is this mm -hmm. this this uh yeah, this tension, this challenge to it that, you know, it's a diff very different kind of energy than when you're just exploring the world. Yeah, and it's, it's, it, becomes, it becomes a very different, like, interesting game. It's like the emotions that it, that it gave me. Uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to dip into some questions here. Goob Shoe Ride asks, uh, what system is this on? You're playing on the Xbox One, correct? Yes, that was, that was what we got early was Xbox One. It's also on PS3, PS4, PC, Wii U. Xbox 360. Xbox 360. There you go. Wish everything. Wishful star on Twitch asked, to "Please tell me this is coming out on Vita." Can you Ooh. believe this is not coming out on Vita? Really? Because like, this would be perfect on Vita. Yeah, right? it would work totally well on Vita. And I want it on Vita because then I would play through it and get 100% on Vita. Well, did Rayman uh, Legends yes. come out at the same time as yes. the other releases? Yeah. On Vita? Yes, it did. Okay. The reason I reference that for those of you who maybe don't know, it's like, is it not? I don't know if it's the same studio, but it's the same. Like engine, engine. Yeah, it's yeah. The, the it's the UbiArt framework, which is basically like 
a, develop, a developer's engine they created to allow artists to sort of prototype games because it's, you know, you it's it starts with the art and then you take the character and animate it a little bit and then build the world around them. So mm -hmm. if, you know, you do see similarities to Ray, the Rayman Origins Legends games, yeah. rightfully so, it's sort of the same creative process. And they've got... Another one announced, I think, that's uh, a World War One era oh game. Oh, yeah. What's that, that called again? It's called Valiant Hearts The Great War. And uh, I believe they showed a trailer for it. Um, maybe, maybe it wasn't E3 last year. But no, that's not an E3. Sometime, type, yeah, yeah, sometime between, sometime more recently. Uh, and it's just, it's a totally different artistic style, but still has the same kind of s storybook feel, for yeah. lack of a better word. Uh, which is really interesting because, you know, it's... It's, it's a kind of game that, you know, it's, it's, it's action-based, too, because you kind of think of artistic-driven games, and I, I would think of, like, a Broken Age, like yeah. we were talking about before, you know, an adventure-type game. But this, you actually have these mechanics of, of exploration and combat and such as that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's also kind of interesting to see this stuff coming out of a major studio as well, uh, this type of game. Uh, I want to ask Quiz quickly, M&M Strangers asking, is this an easy role-playing game? Uh, well, like Chris was saying, like on medium, I felt I felt the same way as you were. Like I, I wasn't losing battles, but I always felt like I could lose battles. Yeah, you felt threatened, and so yeah. it's, it's, you don't just feel like you're. I didn't feel like I was just romper stompering everybody. Yeah, it felt like I beat every boss by the skin of my teeth, basically, and mm -hmm. it's, and it wasn't that wasn't actually true, but it always felt like. They could beat me at any time. Uh, Heap Gamers asked, does this game have co-op? Uh, Sakatome yes. has asked, how does the co-op work? So I'm guessing there is some sort of... So there is co-op, and uh, you can see that I have the, my blue companion, who's not named Ignatius. <laughs> Igniculus. Igniculus. So he comes with me at all times, and I control him with the right stick, but if I had a friend, oh, if I had a friend... <laughs> Uh, my friend would be able to control that, and it's a local. It's a local thing. It's kind of um, Mario Galaxy style, where it's yeah. Like if you have a You're younger like sibling, things. or you have a you know a younger child, or you just mm -hmm. you know someone who is who is interested in this world and the characters and the art, but doesn't necessarily want to do the all the heavy lifting. Like it's it's a really great companion. Well, yeah. Who you want to? Who would be content to play, like be like kind of participant, but mostly a spectator? Yeah. You know, like that's a. That's a niche that is not only filled by children. We'll say that. Yes. Or poor younger siblings who will never get a chance to play as the main character because their older sibling just won't let yeah. them. No. We've uh, all been there. Ty Space Hall asks, uh, does Child of Light explain its combat mechanics uh, well at the beginning? Is this type of game where you need to have played those old games? Or oh, no, not at all. This, this is very friendly. Uh, for people who are not, who don't really know those games. Yeah, they ramp, it ramps up really easily uh, and, yeah. you know, it sort of builds these systems of, like, uh, you know, the different attacks you have. And you also have spells and you can also defend. And so there's, and, you know, you also yeah. use potions. There's more, you know, going on there than Tom needs to employ now, but... Uh, I can't really see the screen as well with the words. <laughs> so you just uh, go with the yeah. straight up attack. So he's going with the straight up attack. But there's magic but spells yeah. and like the, your different actions take a certain amount of time and monsters can interrupt you if you're not careful. So all that stuff, you know, is, is smartly paced and well explained. Yeah, also this game is pretty. It's gorgeous. I was oh, just about to yeah. say, what's <laughs> like, going on? It's kind of insanely good looking. It's really pretty. Yeah. The animation on her is wonderful as well. I know. It's, it's just such a lovely game. Look at and this. I'm so glad that it exists. How long did it take you to complete it? Not to ask us stupidly I, obvious questions. Oh, that's a that's a fun question. <laughs> um, we could really get into that. Do you want to get into that? Yeah, without ask. spoiling anything. I think it took me about fifteen hours. Um, oh, if yeah. I played oh, this wow. on if I played this on Vita, it would have probably taken me about twenty or so hours to do everything. Why is that? that? Why? Because I haven't I haven't done everything. Oh, you oh, would have. Sorry, but I would have done everything on the Vita. It. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. I didn't have a chance for the for the review purposes. Uh, I, it's, it's also just a game I wanted to Wait, not Vita. In. Why would you have done everything on the Vita, but you didn't on the Xbox One When I version? play Vita games, it's like 100%. Why? Oh, really? Is it just because you have like a huge commute? OCD. That you, yes. That's all you can I do? Because I commute for two hours a so day. So if you're, if you're playing it on your personal time, basically is what you're saying. You yes. Would, you would have hundoed it. Yeah, I would have 100 percent of this game, and I really, I really want to. Uh, hundoed. Uh, <laughs> speaking okay, <no>. of hundos, <laughs> uh, Mouser Madness asks, how much grinding is required in it? None. Zero grinding. Zero grinding. I did not grind at all. I in the beginning. Did I, you bump? A little bit. All right. Then. A little bit. Yeah. I, I did fight most enemies that I saw. As you can see, the, the combat is kind of optional for the most part. Yeah, you can I did fight avoid. most of the enemies that I saw, but I, it, I, it is not grinding. It is not like Final Fantasy X that I'm currently stuck in because you have to grind in that game. 
Oh, people were recommending me that I play that as a I better did. Final Fantasy. I, why do I want to grind? Okay, so I got to the end boss in that game, and then I had to grind. So I don't know if I'm ever going to finish that game. Oh, wow. The end boss is not the finish of that game, or you have to grind to finish the end Yeah, I couldn't, boss. I couldn't finish the end boss. That's annoying. Blah, blah. Uh, Canadian SP31 asks a question on the face of it, maybe is a little strange considering this game, but then I remember it's made by Ubisoft. Will Child of Light have lots of DLC? I don't know how they would do DLC. I mean, it's 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 is a it done and dusted. It's a complete story. I don't expect to ever see a sequel. I don't expect to ever see DLC. I think this is a singular adventure that just stands on its own. But we'll see. Maybe I could be wrong. I kind of just hope it is. I mean, it's just like that kind of game. How frequent is like platformer DLC? This is not a platformer. Oh, okay, you're right. It's a, it's a two dimensional. What would you call it? An RPG? It's technically an RPG. I didn't I didn't mention the genre in my review because it just didn't. Fit anything. I, did, I, did okay. feel, I didn't feel it was necessary, but okay. yeah, this this is by our definition just an RPG. So what would it, what would the DLC then be like? An extra little adventure, a new area. What was yeah. the um, what was the game new character? Uh, that Epic released? Uh, Xbox 360 side scrolling. Remember that one? Yeah, I'm totally blanking that on it. That one. Yeah, yeah we both feel like that on extra missions. Are you talking about Shadow Complex? Shadow Complex. Yeah, the Shadow Complex didn't have any DLC. Uh. You just brought something completely unrelated. Maybe. Different genre, different company, and didn't have DLC. Thanks, Danny. God, thanks for making that job <laughs> easy, Tom and Shay. Oh, sorry. All right, all right, that's, back. Well, then that's the end of the Child of Light no, demo. No, 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 shut it down. It's done, it's done, it's all right. Oh, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so you looking, is, is your review up already? Yeah, it's up. It gave it an eight. I think it's great. I'm I, enjoying that, it. That's really rhymes. unnecessary to say that. that was, yeah, yeah, it rhymed. It was great as well. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, Tom, since you're here. Oh my god, are we doing Star Wars stuff? All that, yeah. Do you know what May 4th is? I, I believe May the 4th be with you oh, is happening boo. very oh, soon. In bro. fact, I have to mention that we are giving away uh, Boba Fett separately on the weekend uh, to celebrate uh, May 4th. Uh, so make sure you're following at GameSpot. Did if you, you know want to that he those. doesn't use the Force? Because he's just a, he's a, he's a robot? Who? Boba Fett? Yeah. He's We're not, not GameSpot is not saying that Boba Fett uses the Force. Officially, we are. Officially. <laughs> that is that is CBS's official policy. Um, so if, yeah, Wes, Wes Moonves believes that Boba Fett uses the Force. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure everyone knew that. This is slanderous. Jesus. Um, so we are giving away oh, the Blue man. Trooper. This guy. This is guy's the blue. The winner of that is... I don't want to break the table. Robbed Ranger. Robbed Ranger, congratulations. Robbed Robbed Ranger. And the winner of... Say his name. Yoda. Nope. Darth. Do you want to read it? Barth. Dar you're halfway there. Darth Vader. We'll, we'll take it. The winner of Darth Vader is at Meathead Militia. Oh. Congratulations. Hooray! Not only are you part of a weird militia, but now uh, you own this ridiculously awesome uh, figure from our good friends at Sideshow Collectibles. Thank you very much to those cool. once again for providing us with this awesome yeah. swag. We are much appreciated, um, as are a lot of the people who won them this week and last week. Uh, and of course, if you want to win uh, the Boba Fett, is it Boba or Boba? Boba. 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 Not Django. Boba I think it's Fett. Django. 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 That's Django Unchained. Dude. Django Unchained. Is that what that movie was about? Oh, yeah. that makes sense now. Yeah, he's a bounty hunter from I was space. Wondering oh why he was God. so OP. Yeah. He was able to murder oh, all those people. Geez. Rocket packs. That's great. You don't That's chain why. up a bounty hunter from space, you idiots. Uh, if you want to win that, make sure you follow GameSpot on Twitter. It's wow. Been, it's been a long day. Are we this is all this, this is all expanded universe stuff, by the way. Yeah, this, this is, is all. This is not. None canon. of this matters. This guy yeah. is he in the expanded universe? Grievous? Grievous isn't, right? He's no, in, he's legit. But, he's he's in, but there was loads of stuff about him he's in the in cartoon. He's in Clone Wars, man. He's good. He Clone Wars is canon. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but was there other stuff that Grievous did that was in? Think about I, it. I don't know. What about my fan I comic will... book I made where the two of us retired in a Georgian estate and lived happily ever after? You in that yes. universe. I don't know. We'll he have to ask my nephew. General Grievous is his favorite. Uh, Anders certainly has an answer for you. I'll he's get back to you on robot. that. He's a robot. He's a robot. He what? No, he's not. I mean, his body is robotic, but he was <laughs> yeah. a man. He's a what? robot. He's a robot then. Does he have a man brain in his head? He's man, machine. Uh, yeah. The, the fusion. fusion. Okay, we okay. Right. We brought it back around. Got it. That's the lobby this week. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, next week on the show, a uh, bunch of uh, other video games and a bunch of other stuff to give away. Uh, the point this week's about something. I don't know. Chris Waters, you're a legend. Tom McShay, you are objectively beautiful. Adios, everyone. <laughs>